Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. Welcome to KubeCon 2022. My name is Raj Vadaraju, Enterprise Architect with FIS, and here with me, Nilanjan Mana. Nilanjan, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. Thanks for attending this session. I'm Nilanjan, a software engineer at Harness and a core contributor to the CNCF Litmus Chaos project where I'm responsible for developing chaos experiments for various types of failure scenarios and the requisite tools required for injecting chaos into various environments. I'm really excited to be here with all of you. Over to you, Raj. All right. So today we're going to talk about chaos engineering applied to the fintech domain. Before we jumping into chaos engineering, let's spend some time on fintech domain. What it is, here goes a problem statement. Non-banking services companies would like to offer banking services and products. Example could be a cab company such as Uber, which provides digital platform to its drivers and passengers would like to offer auto loan. Why would they do that? I mean, for obvious reasons, they want to increase their revenue streams and also they want to serve their loyal customers, make them happy by providing some competitive you know, interest rates. So, if so, why they have to look at some fintech providers? Why can't they do themselves? Again, for some obvious reasons, you know, Uber's primary business is not banking, A. B, they don't have banking. Because of that, they don't have banking ecosystem and uh, they don't have banking license. And they have to go through, even they do, they have to go through a lot of uh, compliance and regulations of banking sector, which is too much for them. This is where FIS would help the fintech companies or fintech consumers, where it exposes banking services in the form of APIs. And these fintech consumers consume those APIs and build some innovative products, provide great customer experience to their end users. It's a win-win for everyone. So how does a, a typical FinTech technical architecture look like? It, it would be something on these lines. Here I want to kind of convey a couple of things. One, the complexity of the architecture and introduce chaos engineering. So the complexity of this architecture is not intentional. It is evolved over the period of time, just like any other organization. FIS architecture is also evolved for the last three decades or so. FIS is building products in the financial services. It built uh, its, its products on all sorts of technologies like mainframe, Windows based, web applications. It evolved, right? Now we are in the cloud native computing era. Uh, the architecture is built on microservices based. Uh, architecture and API gateways, Kafka, and everything in, in between. But these modern architecture need to integrate with legacy architecture because you still have certain capabilities provided by legacy architecture while uh, FIS is going through the, its digital transformation uh, phase. So in this context, you have to understand, uh, uh, this is a classic distributed systems architecture uh, out there. And distributed systems architecture brings its own challenges. The challenges around resiliency, where things could go wrong in anywhere in the system. What do I mean by things could go wrong? Like, you know, there could be a network partition that could happen between the systems. There could be a service disruption. There could be uh, a fault that could be happening. This is where chaos engineering discipline could help identify those issues and uh, resolve them, thus providing superior customer experience. So what is chaos engineering? I mean, it's a discipline or a practice experimenting on a system in order to find how resilient it is, meaning whether the application can withstand to the turbulent or faulty conditions. You know, what I'm 
what what do i mean by that let's work with an example the example could be uh there could be a network latency or or generally latency between two microservices in your in your stack and what if if the if the if there's a latency on the downstream system how the upstream system is impacted right you want to understand how resilient your application is and overall stack is just like any other engineering practice chaos engineering practice as you know three pillars depicted here you have people you have process and you have ecosystem so next few minutes i'm going to double click on ecosystem and a little bit of one process and explain to you what the journey that FIS went through and uh, the thought process that we went through and how we put together this uh, ecosystem because it's not just a chaos tool that's good enough to implement chaos engineering practice uh, but you need to envision and think about uh, uh, ecosystem so here is the uh, the ecosystem that we have put together why we have done this one we want to find the toil within the within the chaos engineering practice and automate it and make it reputable process and second we need to scale it so why we need to scale it we need to scale it because organization like fis has multiple hundred products and we need to build an ecosystem and tools and the processes so that we and we build this consistently and in, in, in a reputable way so that we can apply this across multiple uh, multiple products that's how we scale it and second we want to uh, automate it so that we can implement chaos engineering for every release that's going into production uh, because chaos engineering itself brings in some additional work so we want to identify the toil around that automate it so that it is easy consistent and repeatable process uh, for, for the application or application teams so as you can see there are four or five pieces in this ecosystem one on the top you have CICD pipeline you have application uh, under test here you have a load generators you have uh, APM tools and uh, you have chaos tool itself plus the captain so I'm going to talk about this each one of them um, here so when you're executing it uh, are, are, are precursor to the chaos test is uh, generating load on an application under test and put it through some load why we want to do that because most of the issues that happen in production happen under load that's why we want to generate some load on the application that we are injecting chaos into that's where uh, the load generators would help okay that's great you have the load generator generating the load on the application and you have chaos tool injecting chaos through its agent into the application but we want to monitor the health of the application when we are injecting the, the chaos what do we want to monitor you have several metrics up and down the stack right you have a metrics at the application level your metrics at the process level and your metrics at the host level such as you know response time throughput error rate at the application level you have process cpu process memory utilization if it's a java jvm based application or jboss you have thread pool connection pools you have a jvm level metrics such as garbage collection and all and you have host level host cpu memory and network uh, io and disk io uh, type of metrics that we want to monitor right in order to monitor those metrics you need tools like dynatrace splunk and prometheus so that that's why they are critical part of this ecosystem now these tools are out there they are collecting the metrics 
and you are executing the chaos uh, experiment and you want to measure the chaos experiment, right? Meaning when you introduce certain network latency, you expect say 2% errors, but you are seeing 10% errors. Today you do that evaluation manually without any automation, right? But with a with a tool such as Captain, which helps with automating these evaluations, where you define your SLIs, in this case, an example that I just mentioned, error rate, and SLO, which is not more than like you know 10%, right? You define that, you codify that in a YAML file, and you put it in, in the in the bit bucket pretty much like some sort of a GitOps model here. And you integrate Captain with the APM tools down below. Now, when you execute a chaos test, you tell Captain, hey, Captain, I executed this chaos test for this period, go evaluate uh, for this five minutes or this 10 minutes. And then it goes, pulls that uh, SLIs, SLOs, pulls the metrics from the data trace, evaluate and give you gives you hey you know for this test you you said you wanted a 10 10 percent error rate is acceptable because you introduced chaos but i saw like a 30 percent error rate that means your chaos test failed then you further dig into it to understand why that uh why why there are so many errors whether you introducing a a latency in one API caused errors in other API. That's further uh, evaluation uh, triaging that you have to do. So, but what Captain can help you with is can help you with eval automating that evaluation process. That's a one toil that you have uh, that is eliminated. Now this is all good, and if you want to automate this further, uh, that's where it says CI/CD would help you. What CACD can help you is help you defining a workflow around chaos engineering ecosystem and uh, help you trigger the load generator through the through Jenkins or CACD pipeline and then trigger chaos uh, experiments and finally trigger evaluations that will talk to Captain which will give you a Boolean val value like pass or fail using which you can make a decision whether you move this software to the next uh, next environment or production uh, or wherever you want to or not. So this is a kind of an ecosystem that we have built to A, automate uh, the toil, B, uh, scale this across the board by consistently uh, and repeated, uh, consistently implementing this in a, in a repeated manner. So now the floor, uh, I'm handing the floor to Nilanjan, who's gonna spend some time on chaos engineering, uh, or sorry, I would say Litmus Chaos tool itself. Nilanjan, floor is yours. Litmus is a tool set to do cloud native chaos engineering. It helps both developers and SREs to automate the chaos experiments at different stages within the DevOps pipeline like development during CI CD and in production, which leads to increased resiliency of the system. It adopts a Kubernetes native approach to define the chaos intent in a declarative manner via custom resources. It uses the operator pattern and relies on custom resource definitions to define the experiments. On top of that, Litmus provides chaos enter dashboard where one can orchestrate and visualize the results and metrics of the conducted chaos experiments, as well as Litmus API for programmatically injecting and managing the chaos. From a top level, Litmus Chaos uses CRs to define the chaos intent and manages the chaos orchestration via operators. There are different CRs such as chaos experiment, chaos engine, and chaos result, while a chaos operator that reconciles the chaos engine CR. In the course of a chaos experiment execution, given that a service account with sufficient RBAC permissions for the experiment has been already defined, one needs to define the chaos experiment CR manifest for specifying low-level experiment attributes such as experiment tunables, 
container images, etc. And the Chaos Engine that binds the experiment with an application instance as well as defines how to perform the Chaos experiment in terms of mounting volumes for the experiment pods or overriding experiment tunables retaining or deleting experiment pods post the chaos and so on. Upon the creation of both these resources, chaos operator reconciles the chaos engine CR to create the chaos runner, which consumes the chaos experiment CR data for experiment creation and then creates the Kubernetes jobs, which creates the requisite experiment pods for running the experiment logic. In the end, the job also updates the Chaos Result CR, which summarizes the result of experiment runs as well as updates the Chaos Engine to bring the Chaos execution to an end. You can schedule Chaos experiments to run them later, export metrics of the experiments via Prometheus Exporter, and get Chaos execution events from Chaos Engine and Chaos Results during the various phases of execution. The unique value proposition offered by Litmus includes, first of all, being cloud native chaos experiments that allow you to validate your entire application stack, be it cloud native Kubernetes resources or cloud infrastructure or even legacy infrastructure with the broad range of experiments that it, that is offered by Litmus. Second being least privileged principal chaos injection which allows for chaos engineering in security sensitive environments using granular RBAC over individual experiments and use of just-in-time execution of privileged containers that limit the abuse and misuse of target environments. Thirdly, it provides declarative pre-checks and hypothesis validation, which is leveraged using litmus probes which can be used for validating experiment steady state conditions with less to no programmatic intervention in a simple and declarative manner. For fourth, we have conditional auto-stopping of chaos injection, which is one of the features of the litmus probes where the failure of the probe condition check leads to the safe abort of the chaos experiment, which prevents any harm to the target resources. Fifth, it provides custom chaos recovery actions and it can be defined as a part of the chaos scenario in a declarative manner to introduce custom chaos recovery steps that can execute conditionally. Sixth, it provides declarative custom tasks, which aids at parallelly running the tasks that simulate real life conditions for the chaos execution. So for an example, running a load generator to simulate a network traffic is what we can do here. Finally, the last one, quantification of system resiliency by use of weighted experiments and probe success criteria to quantify the result of your system as a metric score. Now, let us take a look at how some of the Litmus Chaos experiments can be leveraged in real life situations to evaluate system resiliency. Thank you, Nilanjan. Uh, thanks for that, uh, that nice overview on Litmus tool. So let's dive a little bit deep into the experiments that Litmus Chaos provides. Here I want to kind of focus on how do you measure the experiment, right? Just like uh, any test, you want Litmus test or Litmus experiment to be measured. Litmus offers a wide variety of experiments. Here I took three experiments as a sample and I want to introduce how we measured when we execute this experiment. For example, when we executed pod HTTP latency, we measured uh, thread pool, connection pool, utilization, error rate, and throughput. Why? So again, back to that microservice A and microservice B example, if we introduce latency between A and B, we want to understand how is it impacted. The resources on, on A is impacted. Pod memory hog, if you introduce a memory saturation type of event and a microservices or Kubernetes architecture, the pod is killed with umkill event. We want to understand whether that uh, the APM systems are alerted because of that event. How is the service response time of APIs of that exposed on that pod? And as well as does the pod memory hog on a particular pod or a umkill event of a particular pod caused any wider impact? Right, that's how it helps you with the, the broader stability 
uh, resiliency issue or understanding the stability resiliency of your application. HTTP status code. So if you want to inject 500 errors on a, on a microservice running on a pod in a say account creation workflow, right? What you want to uh, understand is when you introduce 500 errors, how it impacts your business metrics such as account creation rate, how resilient your overall application stack is, how it's impacting your, your business metrics. So earlier I talked about Captain doing a chaos evolution. So how what is the example of a chaos evolution? Here, the way we envision chaos evolution as a kind of three phase manner. You have pre-phase, pre-chaos phase, during chaos phase and post chaos phase. Pre chaos phase, you can think of a like a steady state. During the steady state, you may define the metrics that you want to measure and you, you, you define the thresholds. Example, you want to measure throughput, error rate, response time, CPU memory, connection pool utilization, thread pool utilization. Say, for example, for uh, response time, you want three seconds throughput 100 transactions per second, error rate less than 2%. And now you executed the test, steady state, five minutes as depicted here, right? You give the captain saying, hey, captain, here is my SLO, SLI definition, and here is my five minute window. I executed the test, go evaluate it. The captain comes back saying that it's all looking good, green, steady state is good. Now you introduce chaos, example, a network latency. Now, typically when you introduce a lat latency, the throughput will go down, the error rate will go up. But your hypothesis is that error, error rate could be impacted only one API where you introduce the latency and it could uh, you know, cause maybe 5% error rate. You feed that your SLIs that you want to evaluate and their objectives or thresholds again in this YAML file and feed it to captain and kept and tell captain, hey captain, I executed this chaos. This is my chaos phase is between 10th minute and 15th minute. And here is my uh, SLI SLO definition for this, go evaluate. Captain would evaluate and comes back to you whether it is pass or fail. If it's within the bounds, it's a pass. If it's outside the bounds, it's fail, that's that leads to further investigation and that will help you find why there are more errors, right? Or any other issues, why the connection pool utilization, uh, you know, went up during the chaos, but it's saturated. You're expecting it to go up to maybe 50%, but it may went up to 100%, right? Or CPU, you're expecting to go up like 5%, but it went up to 50%. So those are the things that Captain can automatically evaluate and give you kind of a, some sort of a heat map and pass fail result. And post chaos, uh, what you need to do uh, is, which is you define your metrics very similar to your steady state. The post phase is more of a recovery phase, right? Where you remove your experiment at the 15th minute and 15 to 20 minute, you want to understand whether application metrics are back to normal, right? So then your SLIs, SLOs, are very similar to what you have in steady state. And then you give the captain saying, hey, captain, go ex go evaluate my post phase. Uh, these are my SLOs, LO, SLI, SLIs, and evaluate it. And captain evaluates and comes back. If it's all looking within the bounds, pass. Otherwise, it market fail. So that's the kind of a power, the automation that captain brings you in evaluating your chaos experiment. So finally, uh, I, I conclude this talk here. Finally, I will leave uh, uh, this session with a thought that usually the chaos engineering is looked at as a more of a SRE problem, but it can help you validate your architecture and also helps you with uh, uh, you know measuring business metrics does uh, help the business teams, ultimately providing greater customer experience and product quality and also with the architecture validation. Obviously, it helps with the stability, mean time to detect and mean time to resolve type of issues uh, that helps with the SRE. With that, I open the floor for Q&A. Thank you very much.